This is household hydrogen peroxide. And if you look at the label on it and work your way down, it tells you that it's used for uh, an antiseptic and you keep working your way down. At some point on the side of this thing, it says, oh, here it is. It says this is 3% hydrogen peroxide solution. And I've had students ask me a question. They've asked me, how do I know that's 3%? Is there some way you can test it? And when they've asked questions like that, it's been, they're sort of thinking, well, maybe we ought to be able to do a lab that we can do a test for hydrogen peroxide or for other household products and actually prove that they're 5% vinegar or whatever it might be. And hydrogen peroxide is a fairly simple one to test for. And so we've designed a lab or we have a lab that we can use for that. The first time I ever did that lab, it involved using 50 milliliter burettes. I made about 10 liters of permanganate solution, which is a lot of permanganate solution. I discovered after I dumped it into the burettes that in fact the permanganate stains the glass. And so these nice colorless, or not colorless, but clear burettes that I had turned kind of brownish. And I had to do some research to figure out how to get rid of the color inside the burette and then mix up the solutions required for that and rinse out the burettes. In the end, it turned out to be a lab that was more trouble than it was worth. Uh, in recent years, we've started doing things on small scale, using smaller quantities, using different types of apparatus. And in fact, we've come down to the point of where many of the things we do are done in pipettes like this one. Uh, some people call them barrel pipettes. Uh, technically, I think the better name for them is transfer. But basically what it is for me is it's a, a container for reagents. I can use this to put virtually anything I worked with in the laboratory uh, into it and use it as a delivery device, a transfer pipette, transferring from a container to another reaction vessel. Uh, there are hundreds of labs out there using transfer pipettes. They've become a staple in high school chemistry labs. Uh, in the Flynn Chemtopic lab manuals, there are a large number of labs that use these transfer pipettes that allow you to use small quantities of material in a safe way in your lab. I want to show you one thing with this particular peroxide analysis, a way to make a particular kind of solution and then just show you the analysis at the same time or after that, that allows you to do some fairly quantitative work. One of the big arguments with going to small scale or using smaller quantities was you can't do anything very accurately. And when I first heard that, I kind of agreed with it because most of the experiments that I'd done with small scale involved counting drops. And frankly, counting drops is a really tough thing to do. One of the things you have to teach your students how to do is make uniform drops. Uniform drops are rather difficult to come up with. And so we looked for ways to get away from counting drops. And one of the things that we tried was doing a gravimetric titration. Gravimetric is a fancy way, name for weighing stuff before you do the reaction and weighing it after you do the reaction and using the mass difference to figure out how many moles you've delivered. So I want to show you a solution or how I make the solution for this particular reaction and then we'll go from there. What I've done ahead of time is I have already weighed out and placed into this beaker 1.58 grams of potassium permanganate. I'm going to set that on top of the balance. I'm actually going to turn the balance on first. I'm going to set that on top of the balance and I'm going to zero it out. I now have in here 1.58 grams of potassium permanganate. I am going to add to that 100 milliliters of water. I honestly don't care if it's 100 milliliters exactly. I'm just going to add some water to it. Uh, I'm going to use the graduations on the side of the beaker because the accuracy here is irrelevant. Okay, and I've got it up to, whoops, there's a drop that just flew out. But we're not going to worry about that because we're just doing this for show. All right, there's a demonstration. Okay, right now I've got it there. I put the water in. 
Permanganate's pretty tough to get to dissolve, by the way. After you've done this, I would set it off on the side on a magnetic stir and let it spin. But what I have found is this, and we're going to go over to the board here now and look at the calculation. Um, I had 1.58 grams of KMNO4 in there. I added to that water, and right now the total mass, the total mass, the 1.58 grams plus the water that I put in there comes out to be 101.23 grams. And this is grams of solution. I'm going to convert my 1.58 grams of KMNO4 to moles through some miraculous set of circumstances, it turns out that the molecular weight of potassium permanganate is 158. Don't know how that happened. But it just turns out to be that way. It was kind of cool. And when I divide this out, it comes out to be about 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative fifth. And now what are the units? Well, let's see. This is grams per mole. This is grams of solution. When you get done with it, the units on this are moles of KMNO4 over grams of solution. Now, what is that concentration unit? Well, some of you might look at it and go, well, oh, it looks a little bit like Moality, it's not. Because moality is moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. It's not quite the same thing, because this is solution. It's not molarity, because it's not moles over liters. It's kind of in between. It's not molarity, not moality. I uh, actually heard a college professor talk about this. And he had a name for it. He decided that he ought to call it molamity, kind of a halfway between molarity and molality. And then I thought, well, if we're going to call it molamity, then we need an abbreviation for it. And we know that molarity is capital M, and molality is small m. So maybe we ought to make this half capital and half lowercase. I thought this was going to be my, my trip to it. Famousness, the famousness. My trip to. Uh, notoriety in chemistry. Unfortunately, so far, no one's picked up on it but me. So I think it's going to just die with me. So anyhow, now I'm coming back to this thing. And here's the great thing about this. I'm going to pull this solution off and just set it to the side. I've got some that I've already made up, and I'm going to get the balance out of the way as well. The great thing about this is now, if I take a pipette, and I fill it with this solution, the permanganate solution. By the way, this is the method you use for filling it all the way. Stick the end down, bend it over like this, and squeeze it, and it fills the pipette all the way up. So then you can get a full pipette of solution. Um, now, if I take this pipette and I mass it at the beginning of the experiment, or weigh it, depending on which term you like, um, then deliver some to a, to a reaction vessel, and then mass it again at the end. Go back and look at this concentration unit for just a second. What I'm delivering are grams of solution. And so I'm going to multiply grams of solution times moles over grams of solution. The grams divide out, and I get moles. Cool. And I don't count drops. So I'm going to do this reaction in this cute little 10 milliliter um, Erlenmeyer flask. I have some of these in my classroom. If you don't have cute little 10 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks, 13 by 100 test tubes work just as well. Um, turns out I've got a few of those. I'm going to deliver to that some hydrogen peroxide. Now, if I were doing this lab in a real sense, 
You know, there's no reason to do that. I would have masked this ahead of time and afterwards as well. This time I'm just going to put in like 10 drops, and that would be the amount I'd have my students use. But they would find the mass. I tell them to mass out about 10 drops, or not mass out. Put in about 10 drops and find the mass of 10 drops. Set that aside. This is a redox reaction. Most redox reactions require that they take place in an acid environment. And so I'm going to add to this a small quantity of 6 molar sulfuric acid. And a couple of drops is fine for that. And I'll set that off to the side here. And now I'm going to titrate this. And I'm going to titrate it with the permanganate. I've weighed this ahead of time. I'm going to look to see what's going on. I'm going to let that drop down inside there. So if you watch this, I'm not sure what's going to work best for you guys, but I'll set it like that, and then we'll go from there. Put that first drop in. You see the bubbles? Is that cool? Bubbles are forming because the permanganate is reacting with hydrogen peroxide. Reaction's taking place. Some oxygen is being released. And I can keep dropping this in, and I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going to do this fairly fast. Your students would probably do it very slowly at first, and then after they got bored with it, would start squirting it in as quickly as they could. Um, they get bored after about four. But we'll run this back in, and we just want to show you what the endpoint looks like real quick. And so can you drop? See the bubbles continue to form each time as we're going along. Still generating a pretty fair amount of hydrogen or oxygen when that peroxide decomposes. But you'll notice that the color's lasting a little longer each time. And so I'm getting closer and closer to that endpoint. The endpoint, by the way, is a pinkish color. Lasting longer. Getting close. Getting closer. Getting, whoa, 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 whoa. I think I hit it. I think I really hit it. Um, okay, and there's my endpoint. I went a little bit past it because I was just going fast for the sake of demonstration. What have I used here? A tiny quantity. The total amount of solution, maybe a milliliter out of this container right now. Maybe a milliliter. How much do I make up for the 130 chemistry students that I teach? Oh, about 100 milliliters of solution. That solution I made a minute ago would last me all day long without any problem. When I'm done with these, I can either clean them out, a lot of work, or I can throw them away. And they're maybe five cents a piece, something in that general area. Uh, students can do three titrations in no time at all with this. That's the thing that sold me on going to small scale. It wasn't that it was safer, that I used smaller amounts of material, et cetera, et cetera. It was that almost every experiment that I did in small scale went two, three, four times faster than the large-scale experiments. The last part of this, and I'll tell you this and you'll have to take my word for it, with an experiment like this one, we generally get something on the range of 2.7 to 3.2 percent for the hydrogen peroxide for the vast majority of my students. If I've got, you know, 70 lab groups doing this, probably 60 of them will get something that rounds off to three. And then there will be groups that get 300% and groups that get, you know, 0.0062% and things like that. But the vast majority of them get something in the area of 3%. What I really wanted to illustrate here, not just the fact that this is a really cool lab and an easy one to do, but also that you can make these gravimetric solutions that can be used instead of counting drops. And you can do this with any, almost anything you work with. So then you can just weigh the pipette before, weigh the pipette afterwards and you've got a number of moles that you can work with.